It's time for the Creator Town Hall here on Studio Live today. And in this week's episode, you don't have to listen to just me sitting here and ranting about various topics related to creating, recording, and releasing your best music. I have a very special guest. He is the owner, curator, and guru of the garagebandguide.com. It is the one and only Patrick Band. How are you doing, Patrick? I am great, Pete. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Oh, mate, it's it's always my pleasure. It is always so good to get together. And you're not on a garage band show. You're on the no. you're on the creator show. We can talk about other things. I can come out and let everybody know that I'm actually an Ableton user and I have been all along. <laughs> Yeah. That would be so cool if you just have a secret little cupboard where it's just got a whole Ableton live rig. Yeah. And, oh, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll delve into mysterious topics like that and many more. But uh, <laughs> I, mate, I get you to do this every single time you're on here. So I'm, I'm going to try and do it for you here. Uh, okay. The GarageBand Guide is all about helping folks create music using GarageBand on their Mac or their iPad or iPhone, and you've got a heap of resources, tools, and tutorials right there at thegaragebandguide.com. Did I do that justice? Fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> in fact, every single video now, I'm going to have to ask you to do that intro. I, think that's, uh... I, could, I could join the team. I could come on board <laughs> and, and say that every time. I'm a hype uh, man, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it on. So, uh, yes, of course, you can jump down to the description. You can follow Patrick uh, at The Garage Band Guide. You can get him there on YouTube. You can go to thegaragebandguide.com. Oh, look, look at all those, look at all those garage band producers you got there. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of folks. They look, can I just they don't look happy. There, Pete? I've, uh, I've just noticed that you have 3,342 notifications on uh, your YouTube. <laughs> I, I do have 3,342. Wow. It just says nine plus there, so I've never really... <laughs> See, Patrick is Unreal. just like, if you can look at the top there, <laughs> 3,342. See, here's the problem. I look at my YouTube notifications in the YouTube Studio app. Let's, You know what? We, we said uh, there'd be segues. We said there'd be segues. Let's, let's tackle this because <laughs> YouTube have two apps. Mm. Why they need two different apps, one for creators and one for consumers, and why they have some things in one and some in the other and some in both is beyond me. What What's your experience with the YouTube apps on iOS, Patrick? And are you as frustrated by these things as I am? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the YouTube creator app is created specifically to torture creators and make you feel utterly guilty about how bad your latest video is doing, I think. Um, Nine out of ten. You're like, oh, come <laughs> yeah, on. exactly. Come on, what? <laughs> Spent an hour in that thumbnail. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, went like this. What? I wouldn't mind if you had access to the same data that you have on the desktop analytics mm. part of YouTube, excuse me, but um, you really don't. And it is really just so you can see how well or how badly you're doing at a glance. Um, yeah, yes. and then it'll dictate how your day goes, really, essentially. It really well, yeah. You can, you can really ruin a day by checking those Google Analytics uh, too often yeah. or sometimes at all. So, uh, yeah, I go <laughs> I go days without that. And we, we will talk more about YouTube later in the show because uh, that is going to be one of our topics because you are a YouTube creator, as am I. And mm. as are many folks that are creating music, this is a creator town hall. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, you really can't be a creator even if it's just mu just music and audio without having some sort of video component as well. Yeah. It has become very, very important for a, a, lot, a lot of folks. So uh, we will talk about that later. If you're watching this on the premiere, you will notice we don't have a studio audience. It's, it's very quiet. There's crickets here. And that is because... At the moment, the way that the world works with time zones, because aren't time zones weird, uh, it is the morning time for Patrick and the evening time for me. So this one will be going live in a couple of days' time at the usual time slot, which means, unlike usual, where Patrick can taunt me by having a beverage, <laughs> I get to have an adult <laughs> beverage instead on the Creator Town Hall, because usually I'm a good boy and I'm drinking coffee because it's 9.30 <laughs> in the morning. But today, it is revenge. I mean, I'll be this enjoying cup it. is just all vodka. <laughs> Like, it's just straight vodka. <laughs> That's how Patrick gets through the day. You wonder why? Have you ever seen the eyes glazed over on some of these videos? Uh, it's all just the, uh, the the straight vodka that he drinks in the morning. <laughs> Mate, speaking of your videos, you made an absolute cracking video just recently. This one here about making more music, or should I say finishing more songs. This one here, yeah. five hacks to help you finish more music. And I thought it is a great topic for us to chat about here on the Creator Town Hall. So first of all, I want to tell folks, go to the, the video. Like, can't, If you're watching on the replay, maybe pause this one. Go watch that. It's only, what, uh, five minutes? Yeah, yeah. 
Go watch the video, listen to what Patrick had to say, and then come back. We're gonna, I'm going to grill Patrick on some of these topics here now just to get his insights on this. So not to completely remove the need to watch that video, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by, by creating more music and finishing more songs? Is there do, – do I, look, I know the answer because I've watched the video, but do I detect <laughs> that there's a little personal story and journey there that perhaps Patrick himself hasn't finished as many songs as you would like to have? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think bar the, the very small minority, most people have stuff that they haven't finished. And there's usually a variety of reasons for that. But personally, yeah, I struggle with uh, I have lots of really great ideas. And then I begin to implement this, those ideas. And then, oh, squirrel, look, another idea. <laughs> so then I go and start another idea. And then it ends up with hundreds of half finished projects in my uh Garage Band projects folder over Mac and iOS. Yeah. So, I mean, this video yeah. was as much to help myself <laughs> as it Self was lecture. to kind of try and help other people. Um, it's quite therapeutic to get these things down on paper and then to actually kind of make a video about it. Um, and again, I don't think I should really be talking about that kind of stuff unless I'm willing to kind of implement some of those hacks myself. So mm. um, yeah, definitely a, a little element of uh, of personal accountability in there. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, th th there were some really interesting things in there, and uh, I'll touch on a couple here. I won't spoil yeah, all of them. Go over and uh, go over and watch the video to find out all five hacks. But this is one that um, that may or may not have resonated with me, and uh, the reason it took me two years to kind of release my first song after starting to create music was all around this, around not being a perfectionist. Uh, have you grappled with those perfectionistic tendencies, Patrick? And without revealing all the tips that you give in the video, how have you managed to overcome those, perhaps? I think you just have to get over yourself, really. I mean, it's, it's a strange thing because you want your projects and your songs to be as good as they can be. And by mm. saying, don't be a perfectionist, I'm not saying that you should settle for making something um less good than you can possibly make if that makes sense mm. um but there comes a point where you have to uh just realize that this thing is finished and you need to release it and um, there's no yeah. point spending all the time that creators spend on making things songs <laughs> anything if you're not going to actually release them um so yeah it's kind of get, coming to that point where you realize that whether or not it's perfect it's done and it's time to get it out there yeah, it, it's a hard thing because, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk later. One of the topics we're going to chat about is questions from viewers because I know you get a lot and they vary in quality and, and answerability uh, substantially. But, yeah, one of the questions I get all the time is, how do you know when your song is done? So what, what do you tell to people that are like, I just, I can't finish this song, I don't know if I'm done. What is the, what is the telling sign that you're actually done with a mix in GarageBand or, or elsewhere? I think when you've got to the stage where you're just fiddling for fiddling's sake, <laughs> when, I sit, when you're thinking, oh, that, those hi-hats are a little bit, I'll maybe cut a little bit off the top end, and then, oh, no, I don't like that. And maybe that kick drum is maybe, oh, just a, a slight, too light. Yeah, that's when you know yeah. it's time to, uh, to let go, definitely. To let go. Let it go, and, and and that again without without giving away all the all the secrets. Learning to let go yes. is something that uh, yeah I've definitely struggled with over time, and and I've definitely seen people in exactly that zone where they're just doing the tweaking, and it's even worse than that because I think sometimes you can make it worse by tweaking, and it's actually better at the eighty percent mark, and then you get it to the ninety percent mark, and things are getting worse. And again, it's it's a tough one because I'm like you, I don't want to say to people don't try and do the best you can, but sometimes you get confused because you're chasing this this unicorn of perfection that doesn't actually yeah, exist. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, very cool. And uh, another one, like there's, there's some other, there's some great tips in there and we won't talk all, all, uh, all show. Otherwise, again, folks won't go and watch the video. So go and watch the video. But um, something that I'm really big on and also really bad at adhering to sometimes is setting a deadline and making sure you know when something's going to be done. Look, there's two schools of thought on this. A lot of people, when I say, hey, you've got to have some positive time pressure, you've got to have a deadline to actually meet, they say, well, well, Pete, art cannot be rushed and one must spend as much time as one needs to create their art. What say you, Patrick? What's what's the deal here? Is there a happy medium? Um, I don't know. Again, I can only really speak from a personal point of view and in anything that I've created, whether that is music or whether that is a uh, a guide to give away or a course to sell it's always been 
announcing the release date. I mean, announcing a release date before it's even finished. Um, yeah. As kind of an incentive to pull my finger out and get it done. Um, I mean, I'm very much the kind of person who will um, needs that accountability. Will announce a date and then still won't do anything until a week before the date, and then feverishly. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely panic but still get it out on time um yeah. i'm not sure that's healthy to do all the time but um it's accountability more than anything else if you're letting your yeah. fans know or your family know or your friends know this is going mm. to be released on this date you can hear this thing on this date or see it on this date um you're kind of under more of a not pressure but to yeah. um get it done on time uh, that kind of yeah. works for me. It might not work for everybody. You're absolutely right, mm. but for me, that um, is a really important aspect of actually getting things out the door. Yeah, no, totally. And uh, and, and again, we'll talk we'll talk more YouTube stuff as well as we go through here. But when I started this YouTube channel and I was doing daily content, I do almost mm. daily content now, but I've been sort of pulling back a little bit for you know reasons of not losing my ever loving mind. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but but I, I had that thing that like whatever went on in the world, whatever went on in the channel, I just had that one goal, which is a video gets out each day. And that really helped me because sometimes I was like, this video is not ready. And I'm like, well, guess what? It's going out. So it yeah. better be as ready as you can make it in the next hour because then it's going out the door and you're moving on to the next one. And I think that's uh, that learning to let go again, as you, as you mentioned, and as you talk about there as your final tip, learning to let go is a tough thing to do because these are our babies. These are our precious little, uh, little artistic projects. And you know what? Strangers on the internet shouldn't be scary, but sometimes they are. And sometimes that fear of the feedback uh, can be yeah. what stops people doing it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, very, very cool. Well, uh, we'll do go and check that one out. And uh, at the risk of making this um, this all about Patrick's and his videos, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's kind of the <laughs> topics we're covering here because that's what's been going on in the world of creativity, especially as it relates to Apple and GarageBand related. Did, did I say that right? GarageBand? It's a good band day. <laughs> Garabande. Correct pronunciation. Yes, <laughs> I've decided. <laughs> it, 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 ga, ga, uh, I'm going with that now. Garabande. Actually, uh, on a live show I did this week, I called it Giraffe Band uh, oh, wow. by mistake, and wow. so now that could be a meme. So I think that needs to be on uh, on t-shirts and, and things. Speaking of which, where is the Garage Band Guide merch? Just quietly, oh, yeah, because I'm your logo again. is awesome. I would wear the crap out of a Garage Band Guide T-shirt, <laughs> and I simply cannot buy one to the point where I almost just grabbed your logo and just went to Vista Print and printed myself <laughs> one last week because I'm like the unauthorized Garage Band Guide uh, T-shirt. <laughs> but uh, get onto that, and, and folks that are watching live, please put pressure on Patrick. Put put a comment and just say, <laughs> Patrick, we want merch. You're a, you're a full time YouTuber. You need to be pimping merch on every single video. It's just the way it it's works. It's the done thing. I'm lacking now aren't i this is it exactly okay. need okay. to get in there uh <laughs> let's uh let's talk about uh, something new that has happened in the world of garage band and you can see it right there it's mm. the little katie perry thumbnail there with the new sounds uh, i i hadn't watched your video to be very honest until about half an hour ago and i'm like i better watch patrick's take on these because i've been spending i already had my plan for the week and then uh garage band just dropped this and like I have a couple of sound packs you know no, no regard for garage band content creators that we have to then scramble <laughs> to work out what the heck is in this update and should we care and i'm pretty sure yours was actually titled new garage band sounds should we care so patrick new garage band sounds should we care <laughs> I've got in my notes here because I did. I was very well prepared and I made notes 10 minutes before jumping on camera with you. So new live look packs, I've put meh universal hatred. <laughs> which seems to be the reaction to it, really. Um, they're not for everybody. I think if you're yeah. making music already in Garage Band, they're not for you. Um, yeah. The same as with the Dua Lipa and Lady Gaga ones that released mm. last year, I think it was. Yeah. Um, they're extensions of in-store training presentations that Apple do um, yep. for GarageBand. Um, and it's essentially just bringing that to the iPad or your iPhone and you're, you're able to kind of take that lesson remotely. Um, mm. From that kind of standpoint, for people who are completely new to the app um, or completely new to Live Loops, they are quite useful if you can mm. get over kind of the 
overly saccharine way that they're presented <laughs> by Blake. Um, yeah. <laughs> I felt. Um, I don't know if I felt bad for Blake or if I was, I was laughing with you with Blake, and I'm like, oh mate. And I know they have to do that, and the, the flowery yeah, words yeah. that they use at Apple in all their announcements and things are, uh, yeah, the amount of things that are, are beautiful and delightful and uh, and silky smooth. What do they use? Buttery smooth. Yeah. Buttery was there smooth, any buttery yeah. smooth? work from Blake I don't know but yeah it was uh, uh, sorry kind of walking that line for a while I think and that was I mean I'm a cynical old man so that kind of stuff I always laugh at that anyway um despite obviously the hard work they put into I'm not taking anything away from them I Mm. should say but yeah for me it's a little bit too a bit too much I don't think people would certainly I wouldn't learn well that way I'd be too conscious that I was just wanting to take the piss I think um (laughs) But yeah, I mean, feedback yeah. from my viewers anyway, um, mm. Not nobody's really that interested in it. People have obviously downloaded it and tried it out and stuff. Um, mm. The issue with copyright as well, so you can't really yeah. do anything with these. So I had clarification from Apple, bizarrely, <laughs> sent me an email, the, the, PR, the PR person for the UK. Yeah. Um, the Katy Perry songs are and loops are copyrighted and you can't share it if you try and share yep. it from garage band it doesn't let you the 17 stuff isn't so you can share that as much as you want yes i don't know why you'd want uh... to do that but if you want to do that you can um well yeah so... and, and apparently the band are are all for it all 17 of them there are 17 of them that's how the band works right there's 17 no, boys 13 in 17 of them. Yeah, 13. <laughs> are there actually 13 mm-hmm. in seven yeah there's a, there is a, there's there's a a calculation behind it. I can't remember. I, I read it, but it's like 13 oh. plus one plus. Oh, so 13 of them plus like their that. record company, plus their publishers, plus their labels, plus their publicist. Like that. And that's yeah, 17. Yeah. yeah maybe. Plus the, the sniper and the nest up above. That's got a red point trained on them for when they put a foot out of line and. Do this oh, take them geez. Out. It just got really dark in here, didn't it? Sorry. Sorry. Pete. <laughs> You can edit that what... part out. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned at the start, we are live to tape. What happens oh, on the Creator no. Town Hall stays on the Creator Town Hall. Oh, no, uh, the yeah. K-pop stands are going to come for me, man, don't they? That, that, they will. Yeah, well, luckily, there's virtually zero crossover. So, uh, here's the thing. I... <laughs> I, between your fans and K-pop, I actually grabbed those because I had the same I had the same experience, and I got to correct it. And I said, "Oh, I got a correction here. I'm going to do this." So I'm like, "You know what? I'm going to uh, I'm going to remix some K-pop mm, for the yeah. very first time because I'm I'm a guy that likes to get out of my comfort zone. Like, I mean, five years ago, there's no way I do live shows. There's no way I do any of the things I do now. So I'm like, you know what? Before I poo poo this, because I've also seen a lot of folks say, "Ah, oh, this is no good." I had a bit of a play with it, and I've got um yeah I, I got the correction was yes you can use those, and you know what there's actually some decent beats in there that I reckon you could you could lift and put into another track because I actually created a reasonably good sounding lo-fi track just oh, really? not using oh, any nice. of the vocals so sorry boys I didn't use your vocals but I just grabbed <laughs> your beats and I grabbed your uh, it had a really nice sort of muted guitar sound in there and mm. they had some nice Rhodes keys in there and I just mm. sort of remixed those together and I'm like ah oh, actually. I don't half. I don't actually hate this song. So there you go. <laughs> Converted to, uh, to K-pop fan. P-Jones. I'll be all. I'll be all over it. Uh, just around the corner, you can be sure of that. So um, yeah, and, and I think you're, you're spot on. It's not for everyone, and I think don't have to be for you. And that's the thing. Yeah. Like it's uh, yeah. uh, that they'll put things out there. Do you think? And in fact, we'll, we'll segue from there. Um, mm. but yeah, if you do want to check that out, by the way, go watch uh, Patrick's very entertaining video. Or uh, yeah, you can watch me spend an hour trying to remix K-pop. It's very funny. I'm just like, oh, no, I got it wrong. Hang on, no, what? Oh, I pressed <laughs> the wrong button. Just whoa, I've, I've lost Patrick. There we go. Oh. Just on that. Um, <laughs> live loops. Is it just my chunky, like, giant fingers, or when you tap on things, t- things just happen? Like, I, I tend to just find that I'm hitting things, and I'll try to scroll across, and it, maybe it's just me, because I've never really learned how to use it properly, but I find it so much harder to use than track view. Is it just because I'm so used to track view, and I'm an old, old man? Like, would, would kids just pick it up and love it? Have you? What's your experience with live loops versus track view? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly the same. I think it's how you learn, yeah. so it's... Uh, live loops is very much a non-linear workflow which i I really struggle to get my head around i'm used to working with a traditional daw tracks view type of thing with a start and an end and you can split it up into sections etc as opposed to the more kind of ableton live um kind of loop loopy pro type of approach where you are just kind of non-linearly 
while. Yep. Um, that really yeah, working I'm and going. putting sounds together. Um, so yeah, it's not yeah. just you. I think a lot of people kind of don't not struggle, but prefer to default to tracks view as opposed mm. to to live loops. Yeah. Yeah, and, and look, it's, it's something, when, when I hand it to my kids, they, they love it. They'll go over to live loops and they'll just start yeah. playing around and mixing and, and creating. And I think if you're playing and you're dabbling, I think it's good. I think it's once you start recording and then having to edit and add effects yeah. and things, I think that's where I get lost because I'm like, yeah, do, do I have to do a whole live performance? And then what if I make a mistake? Do I stop yeah. then? Do you just keep going and edit afterwards? Do you? I, yeah, I, I don't get it. Exactly. But I, I have the utmost respect for folks that can use loops and especially the, the Ableton people. Like your, your Ableton closet that you have over there where you, where you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have respect for you to be able to do that. Let's uh let, let's stay on the garage band. Sorry, the giraffe band. Sorry, the garad <laughs> garad bande uh, topic, <laughs> and talk about this because one of the things that I said. So I, again, I got some similar comments from people saying, "Oh, this is terrible. This is no, who would want this?" And I'm like, oh, "Come on, like people people getting into it. If it gets, I, I like to say, if 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 one kitty that wouldn't have picked up garage band now does and starts creating music and then you know moves on to other things." Because of those things, if one person does it, then that's a good thing. More people yeah. creating music, but it's not for you. But I, I, my, my response to this was that, to me, it's a positive thing because it means that Apple are actually caring. If They, they wouldn't have paid little money to get Katy Perry and Seventeen uh, on to GarageBand. They would have paid some, if not all, money to get that. So to <laughs> me, it shows that they're investing in this. And the fact that it's a free DAW that you get on your iPhone or iPad, and I know, well, I don't know if you get this, Patrick, but when I say it's free, people are like, except the thousand dollars you have to pay for an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac. Not free. Okay, it's bundled. I've started saying it's bundled. It's included software. So for included software, where are we going with this? Because about two years ago, people were doomsdaying. People were like, GarageBand hasn't had a real update in over a year and it's all going to go and they're going to take it away and it's not going to be a thing anymore. Clearly, that's not the case, yeah. but also hasn't had dramatic updates apart from 14 packs of 808s in yeah. the last uh, couple of years. So <laughs> what do you see as the future? Where, where is it going, uh, I guess, on iOS, but also on the Mac over the next sort of year or two, do you see? Uh, it's hard to say, really, isn't it? I think you're absolutely right. They're obviously still invested in the platform on mm. iOS specifically. Um, yeah. What you need to remember is these exciting live loop updates don't land on Mac at all. And that's not just GarageBand. Right. Logic doesn't get them either. Yeah. I don't think anyway. I don't think so. Um, I haven't checked Logic, but I don't think they are. Because they have got live loops in Logic, but I don't think those packs land on anyway. Um, Someone will correct us. Someone's typing furiously right now. Almost certainly, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know, if, like you say, it is a free DAW and it would be good to know how much time and money developers at Apple are allowed to put into these free programs. I think it would be different if people were paying for them. They might be more mm. incentive to have more frequent, useful updates as opposed to the 14 packs of 808s, as you said. Um so I don't know. It's hard to tell, really. I mean, short of adding more sound content, mm. the other option is a larger update that adds more functionality. But then mm. again, it's that question of with iOS 16 coming and iPadOS 16 coming this year, are we going to see any large changes, any form of large update? They usually drop something with the release of mm. a new iOS version, but whether or not it would be some form of large update or just, I don't know, another live loop yeah. grid or something like that, it's, it's hard to say. Um, on the Mac side of things, though, again, it's completely a lot less content gets added to GarageBand for Mac. It gets one or two larger updates, and that usually adds the sound packs that have been added to iOS up to that point. Um, yeah. Up until then, you either have to hack them in via bringing in a project from ios that has those loops in and then it will automatically download or you're stuck mm -hmm. not using them so um yeah i mean if there's ios users out there thinking god it's been a long time since i've had a meaningful <laughs> update I try being a garage band from mac user i tell you um but that's different yeah. i think apple are quite happy leaving garage band on mac as a kind of introduction to mm. logic i think that's very clearly what that is um, yeah Whereas on iOS, it's very much its own thing. And I think that's maybe why they spend a bit more time adding more exciting, unique features to iOS over, over Mac. 
Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah, no, I, I, it's interesting. And I, 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 as someone who's followed you for many, many years, I do remember you know, two, three years ago, before, well and truly before I even used a Mac for the very first time, I would see your, your tweets and your posts and your updates and be like, well, got another GarageBand Mac update, bug fixes yeah. and stability improvements. And that was all you got for literally three years. There was nothing new until they started adding in. And again, when the, you got the big update, it was like... <gasps> Oh, we get to just use exactly the same sounds that we have in iOS, which you could have yeah. brought across if you just export and import your project anyway. So, exactly. yeah, there's been been very limited stuff, but I think you're right. And I think uh, we, we've talked about you know, six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, as long as we've been chatting about this stuff, we've talked about the fact that iOS music creators, like Logic on the iPad, man, when's it coming, dude? We need Logic on the iPad. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I've almost given up on the fact that that's just simply not going to happen i don't know what your thoughts are on that do you you see any ray of sunshine are we going to just we're being downers tonight we're being grumpy old men aren't we we (laughs) might as well call this the grumpy old men hour (laughs) um but do you see a pro version of garage band or some sort of logic or some sort of better more full featured daw from apple on ios in the future at all I think it's strange that they haven't introduced something already because they are leaving money on the table. And we've Mm. talked about this before as well, that people moving on from GarageBand, essentially, if they want a linear DAW to move on to, it's going to be Cubasis 3. If they want a more live loop type experience, it's going to be Loopy Pro. There's not really, there's not an Apple made next step, which is really strange for Apple. But there's money to be made, you'll find Apple. And it's strange (sighs) that there isn't that option there on iOS. I think Mm. that's more because Apple see the ipad as a companion to a mac as opposed to its own thing yeah um, i think they would much rather you grow out of garage band on your ipad and then buy a mac and then buy mm. logic um, mm. as opposed to giving you a solution that will keep you on the one platform um so yeah i mean yeah. I, we've talked about this before as well what would logic pro on an ipad look like i mean yeah. it's going to have to be built around touch and as good as something like Cubasis 3 is, it is essentially a port of a desktop program, with which has had, obviously, um, adjustments made to it to accommodate for touch. But yeah. it's certainly, you're going to get better control from Cubasis 3 with a mouse than you ever would kind of tapping at it with your fat fingers, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so especially I, on the smaller screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Apple are kind of splitting up the iPad line now, which I never thought they would do. So mm. obviously there's features coming only to M1 and potentially M2 equipped iPads, things like uh, is it Stage Manager, things like that, yeah. which yeah. aren't going to be in other iPad models, which I didn't think Apple would ever do. That seems ludicrous. Um, yeah. But they are going to be splitting up that user base. So who knows? Who knows what Apple are going to be? Who knows? <laughs> I, I know. And, and look, before, before, obviously, without Apple, neither of us would have a job. So uh, you know, before you think that we're being too harsh on this, we it's, it's almost like we, we're we angry because we love them. It's like your children. It's like, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. I'd just like to know a little <laughs> bit more about what your plans are because uh, Apple are the kings and queens of uh, secrecy and not letting anything out of the bottle and yeah. slip uh, when it comes to this sort of stuff. So we shall see. But let us know. Let us know your thoughts. Drop it in the comments. Uh, drop it in the chat here. Let us know what your thoughts are on that. I do think that, because uh, if you look back, look back at the the updates we've had in GarageBand, iOS in particular, because again, Mac's been like a wasteland. It's just been yeah. tumbleweeds <laughs> rolling past. But in iOS, we got uh, note labels in 2.3.9. We got uh, MIDI importing in 2.3.10. Like the last few versions have added little tiny things that have kind of been sort of quality of life improvements that haven't actually moved the needle. Yet you and me are screaming, auto normalization option, yeah. please. Master yeah. track control, please. So some of the easy things that almost seem like easy home runs to hit they're just like no we're, we're okay with not having that we want to hold people's hands with that sort of thing we don't want to add additional advanced options yet you go into the advanced settings and there's like midi cc controller lag latency like there's so many things in there that i don't even know what they do and when was the last time anyone used jam session Patrick, when was your last GarageBand jam session in GarageBand? This is it, exactly. <laughs> it's a really cool feature, but um, yeah. Who uses it? I've never seen anyone use it in the wild, mostly because latency is still a problem. And I don't if they were to have some form of online jam session where you could hook up with someone who is not sitting right next to you, that would be great. There you go. There but, you go. 
do that. All right, we've, now that we've solved all the problems, all yeah. right, we've, we've solved all the problems of the world. Uh, we've, we've sorted out GarageBand for the future. I'm going to move the topic order around here a bit <laughs> because uh, you talked about iPads. And mm. one question that I know that you'll get asked and I get asked frequently is, my goodness, how many models of iPads do there need to be if I'm going to create music in GarageBand or, or any create? Because the same thing sort of goes for Aurea or Cubasis or Fruity Loops or BandLab. Yeah. What? what? What do I buy? How do I know what to buy? You talked about the fact that before that, that Apple has split up the iPad. So yeah. before it was split between the regular iPads, the iPad Air, the iPad Mini and the iPad Pro. Now with the M1 iPad Pro, there's actual additional features that you mentioned before. Stage yeah. manager, external display support yeah. that are only on those M1 iPads. And the latest rumor is M2 iPad Pros are just around the corner in like October. That's the, the latest thing that I'm hearing. So... Oh, what, what what do you buy if if someone comes to you and obviously most people ask questions like what do I get and <laughs> you, and answer is it depends what yeah, are you trying exactly. to do and what's your budget yeah. but if someone says to you I have a budget of a thousand dollars and I want to get into music production right now on an iPad what do you send them to buy right now yeah it's a tough one isn't it mm. at, at, right at this moment I would say don't buy anything I would say wait wait um, yeah. This, this is we're coming into the kind of worst period to buy yeah. something new from Apple because that about last quarter of the year, do not buy. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, we're laughing, but never do it, especially when it comes yeah. to iPads and iPhones this close to kind of September, October time, because there yeah. is there is a lot of buzz about new iPad models and a new base mm. iPad and all this kind of stuff. So there's no point spending money because Apple won't reduce the price until either after they release the new model or they'll just completely discontinue the current models that are here now and you'll have to get them from a somewhere other than Apple, Amazon or a reseller or something like that. So yes. I would say, wait, there's no point spending full price on any iPad model today when there'll be new iPad models potentially at the same price, although I think mm. we're going to see increases on everything this year. Um, well, yeah, look, that's that, that's a, another really good question is, um, yeah, that, that is always the advice you give. But is inflation and the potential increased prices due to supply chains and other issues going to change that advice this year? Is it maybe worthwhile striking now before that? I mean, I, I don't think so still because yeah. you can still pick up those other ones, uh, refurbed or or even new sometimes through Amazon or other resellers. So yeah. it's often not worth it. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tough one. And when, when I look there at Apple, they, I, I always go, whatever Apple have on the front page, this is what they want you to buy. <laughs> so they want you to buy an iPad Air right now so uh, from $929 Australia which is about $600 US so that's probably because it's got USB-C which means it has the ability to have better connectivity mm -hmm. and it doesn't have the price tag of an iPad Pro but it still has an 11 inch screen to me and an M1 chip inside as well and an M1 chip inside as well so to me that is probably what you'd if you had to, if you someone held a gun to your head and said you've got to buy an iPad right now to produce music, it probably is that air because it kind of is that balancing point in between yeah. your base level and obviously your mini. Although the mini, the minis are pretty darn good. You you would you were checking out a mini from from Apple uh, that they the last one that they released and yeah. that thing's a bit of a beast. How did, how did you find that? Is that I think yeah, it was really good up until they decided to not includes lots of new fancy features on an iPad they just released that costs yeah. 500 pounds it's an a14 yes. or an a14 or an a14x it's in that model which mm. says to me they're probably going to update that with an m1 chip in october sure yeah. um mm. so yeah i mean it's a great little ipad but again i wouldn't recommend buying one i think you're right i think the ipad air because that was only just updated mm. that's the safe bet i think and I yeah. think even since they released the new the new design iPad Air in 2020, that's always been the one to go for if you're kind of an intermediate getting in on the ground floor kind of um, brand new iPad for making music. It's definitely, can you're getting the best of both worlds in terms of it's kind of budget friendly, but you're mm. also getting enough, certainly now enough power under the hood to be able to deal with pretty much, pretty much anything really. Yeah. Um, the only downside of that is RAM, but then again, we're still not making anywhere, not making use of the RAM. Like I've got an iPad Pro from last year that's the eight gigabyte model, and yeah, still nothing, nothing comes close it. to matching yeah. it out at all. So 
No, and and even though uh, Apple did announce uh, it, in iPad OS 16 that it would open up that, so the problem was it wasn't developers. Developers yeah. want to be able to use more RAM. Apple have just had 8 and 16 gig on these high-level iPads for a long time. Well, for a long yeah. time, for six months. That's a long time in Apple land. Uh, <laughs> for a while. And there's been nothing that could actually utilize that much memory. So, um, yeah. yeah, in terms Pointless. of being able to have them, why do you need them? And everyone thought it was going to be for future-proofing, for potential, you know, crossover Mac OS, iPad OS. I think that it's pretty clear now that Apple are going to keep things pretty separate in terms yeah. of iPad OS, Mac OS, and even iOS. And yeah. now they've branched out even further to say there's almost this pro, you'd almost call it pro iPad OS, which is going to be the one that's going to have any of the M series chips are going to be able to have additional stuff, which, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting here on a, on a 2020 M1, uh, I, not M1, 2020 iPad, which has got A12Z, I think, processor mm-hmm. in it. Which is absolutely fine. It absolutely flies along for that same reason you said before, that nothing uses any more power than that. So until I start hitting some limitations, and I think this is where, whenever I'm giving advice to people on things, a new machine is not necessarily going to make your your music production better. It's not going to make GarageBand do things that it doesn't do right now unless you're hitting those walls. If you're running a 2012, well, actually, if you're running an iPad Air 2, which you and I both own, both love, and are both about to like put away for a long time because yeah. they will not Bury get the, the iPad garden, OS. Yeah. yeah, they're going to be uh, out the backyard because um yeah, they they're not getting the update but um unless you are really hitting optimizing performance all the time or you're hitting yeah. all the beach balls on your Mac, uh it's not really going to do a whole lot for you and it's certainly not going to make you finish more songs. See, we went right back absolutely. around, right back yeah, around absolutely. to the talking about the start. What about Max? Max, uh, they've had a bit of an interesting time, obviously going from, uh, for those that aren't aware, Max used to have Intel chips in them mm-hmm. about a year and a half ago now in 2020, the M1 chip, which is Apple's own silicon, was put in a range of Macs. We've then had Mac Midis, we've had the new Mac Studios, we've had MacBook Airs, we've had MacBook Pros, we've had uh, yeah. iMacs. Everything's got these M1 mm-hmm. chips and now we've got the M2 chips in the new MacBook, well, the, the new old model MacBook Pro. It's very confusing how do people yeah. navigate this patrick what's what's your someone comes to you and says patrick i've got no idea what mac i need to buy it's all too confusing what do you say to them no idea either what <laughs> um <laughs> it's, it's straight because when apple released the m1 chip so the m1 mac mini and macbook air and macbook pro it was easy they were yep. affordable they were stupidly powerful more powerful i think than apple even intended them to be and it was easy to recommend that's what you get if yep. you want, if you've only got on a budget, get a kind of base model Mac Mini. If you've got a bit more to spend, get a bit more RAM or whatever. Easy, and yep. now it's it's becoming more. Ugh, Apple are just falling into that same trap that it's just becoming very confusing for people. There's yeah. so many options out there, and their marketing doesn't adequately explain what each product's for or who it's for. Yeah. I think Apple are really kind of falling into the, the kind of trap of trying to market everything to everybody. Um, yeah. Even when they're talking about the the Mac Studio that came out, was that early this year? Mm-hmm. It's the one that careers have been waiting for. It's fantastic, and it's like six thousand pounds. Like that's <laughs> not for people who are like creating music. That's for professionals who are like animating and things like that. Surely. Yeah. Um, yeah. From three thousand Australian. Yeah. <laughs> from. Um, <laughs> and then obviously you've got things like last year the new MacBook Pros with the M1. Pro and M1 Max, is that right? Mm. M1 uh, Ultra, Max and oh. Ultra. And yeah. then, but this year... <laughs> oh, hang on, no, Pro and Max. This year was Ultra. Pro. Oh, my God. This is why it's people... Yeah, cut. Exactly, yeah, exactly. We, we live and breathe this stuff and we can't remember. Exactly. Um, and then they stuck an mm. M2 chip in the previous mm. year's MacBook, the 13-inch MacBook Pro this year. So then yeah. people were thinking, well, is the M2 better than the M1 Max? And then it's not at all, but... no. They're not. They're not really communicating this adequately to the average <laughs> consumer, and it just means the whole line is confusing now. Yeah. Um, I I think personally, if someone was to come to me and said, "I have never had a Mac before. I want to make music using GarageBand and potentially mm. Logic," I would say, "Still get an M1. You're still yeah. going to. The performance is still absolutely more than adequate for for what you'll need." Um, yep. And you can get a base model Mac Mini if you've got all the other par- paraphernalia now for about 600 quid or whatever. Or yep. you could go for an M1 MacBook Air, which mm. Apple still sell 
randomly yeah. because they upped yep. the price of the base model of the M2. Thank you, inflation. Um, oh, yes. So you could still go for the M1 MacBook Air. They are fantastic machines and will do 99% of the things that you want them to do if you are a home or bedroom musician. Absolutely. And yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with that because, yeah, and this is where, if you're wondering why this is so confusing, this is the MacBook Air that Patrick was just talking about. So the M1 is this old wedge shape that we have mm -hmm. here from here in Australia, $1,500. The M2 chip, they've got the newer kind of MacBook Pro 14 inch style design, but in a MacBook Air, it's the M2 chip and it's more expensive. So that makes sense, right? You're like, oh, if I want the older hardware, it's not going to be as powerful, but I'll get the M1. If I want the newer one, I'm going to pay $400 more and get the M2. The problem there is, though, it's the exact opposite story in a MacBook Pro. Yeah. Because if you look at these ones, you go, oh, this one's got the brand new M2 chip, all the shininess, and it's $1,000 cheaper than the base model of the 14-inch MacBook Pro from last year that's got the M1. But because this has the Pro and the Max chips in it, and this one just has the regular M2, this is actually more powerful than this is, even though it's yeah. a year older. And it's and plus, this one is the old body. Like, this has the old touch bar and the old yeah. webcam. And so, yeah, don't buy this. That's one well, thing I can comfortably say. Do not buy the MacBook Pro 13-inch model right now. The MacBook Pro 14-inch I have, and it's amazing. The Mac Mini I have, and it's amazing. Everything else at the moment, I think, uh, yeah, like you say, if you're getting into entry level, if you want a laptop, MacBook Air, or the Mac Mini is basically the MacBook Air, but without a screen. Like yeah. They're almost identical in terms of performance and, and yeah. hardware. A few extra USB ports on the Mac Mini, but that's about it. So, yeah, I'll be running my $1,000 Australian dollar, so $700 Mac Mini M1, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gig um, SSD. And I, this is what I do. This I do these shows. I run Logic. I run GarageBand. Do I have all the gra all the hard drive space? No. Should I have probably got a terabyte or two? Yes. <laughs> but uh, I make two. I'd plug an SSD in via via yeah. Thunderbolt, and we're good to go. We're we're away. So, yeah. Uh, there you go. See that that should be simple, but it's actually hard. And you know what? Yeah. It, it, it's when people say Mac or PC, it used to be, well, the good thing about a Mac is you buy the Mac, you buy the mm. iMac, or you buy the MacBook, or you buy the the Mac Pro. Now, you can't just say that. You can't just yeah. say, here is the one path you go down to buy this. There's so many options. And I'm like, yeah. man, if Steve Jobs was around, he'd just be like, there's too many. He was the king of, you need a simple pathway. Yeah. And it's just, it's a bit complicated at the moment. So yeah. hopefully they'll find their way. But you know what? Uh, uh, you've, you've mentioned this before, but the best consumer advice is wait for all the announcements and all the shininess. All the Apple lovers will go off and buy the new shininess. Yep. And then they'll resell their pristine condition six month old and 12 month old apple products and you can pick up a bargain so that's always Absolutely. the way to do it yeah. go refurb all the way Definitely. all right so we, 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 that took a lot longer than i thought it would but that's okay <laughs> hopefully hopefully it helped a few people but uh yeah mm -hmm. if you can watch at least it, get comfort out of it that if we're confused and this is our full-time jobs yeah. knowing this stuff then yeah. we can only imagine what you feel like so um Hopefully that's all right. Uh, <laughs> let's let's completely change topics and talk about videos and, and mm. YouTube and all the jazz because uh, a while ago now you were you, you moved into doing content creation and YouTube and, and all the stuff that you do as a as a full time gig and um we'll talk about that in a moment but I, I was saying in the pre show I'll, I'll let it out here that I'll say to Patrick yeah it's, uh, sorry about that I, I was the one of the ones that's like yes it's great come on over here because I've been doing this full time for a couple of years now <laughs> and this summer has been one of the more challenging challenging times, shall we say, yeah, yeah. for content for a number of reasons, for global P words, for being summer in the Northern Hemisphere, which is always a bit of a downtime. Yeah. And because of this stuff here, short form video. Mm. Now, I've seen on your channel, you've had a crack at some shorts. I've definitely had a crack at shorts. I've seen you over on the TikToks. I've seen you on the Instagram with the reels and all the things as well. I I can't quite get my head around it because I'm an old man, perhaps. But um, <laughs> is short form content the future of videos and does it translate for tutorials they're kind of the, the two things i wanted to, to to wrap with you about here so uh what's your views uh what's your your hot take on short form video hot take um <laughs> yeah, do you not peru do you not do you not sit crippled for hours unable to tear your gaze away from your tiktok feed as you doom scroll of an <laughs> afternoon pete no is that just me is it right okay i uh, what am I doing I, with my life <laughs> I have an addictive personality, mate. So I've uh, I've put in uh, put in restrictions to make sure I don't do that because right. I could very easily wow. go down that rabbit hole uh, oh, if I'm, I let myself do it. I'm not that responsible. Um, 
Yeah, so well, that, well, there you go. What, what's good there? What, what do you like about it? Let's, let's spin that around and say, uh, what, what, could, what have you found? What, what are the positives? Because it's easy to dump on this sort of stuff and say, it's, it's terrible, the kids these days, and dopamine hits, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but there's got to be something good about it. If everyone's into it, it's got to be something good about it. What are, you, what are you liking? What are you finding? Any nuggets of gold in there? I think from the, the kind of perspective of what we do in terms of tutorials and things and showing people how to do stuff in DAWs, then yeah, there's loads of people doing that on TikTok, yeah. for example. Um, just bite-sized chunks. Um, you can do up to 10-minute videos now on TikTok, would you believe? See, don't ever do this a 10 This is what I don't know. No, no, I wouldn't. Watch a 10 but, but, on TikTok. Right, um, I know. But certainly oh. kind of having bite-sized tips um, that are kind of easily accessible on TikTok yeah, loads of people are doing it with great success. Um, I, I think shorts and Instagram reels are a, another thing altogether. And the issue Ooh. with that from a creator standpoint is is that you don't really get paid unless you're the people who are getting paid from TikTok's creator fund are people who are like doing dances and getting 17 million views. Like you're never going to get that yeah. doing garage band tutorials on TikTok. But in terms of reaching an audience, um, I think if you're not doing some form of short form content, you're kind of not mm. doing yourself a disservice, but especially all those young people, Gen Z, nobody really watches TV anymore. There's, and I think it's going to be a future of mixed, fairly long form in terms yeah. of maybe 10 to 20 minute videos on YouTube and bite-sized short content on sites like TikTok. I think yeah. um, so I think uh, you'd kind of need to and you don't need to do much so I mean I, I'm, I'm don't put anywhere near as much effort into TikToks and shorts as I do for regular YouTube videos it's usually yeah. clips from other videos that I'll edit down into a different kind of form factor and then upload onto shorts or on a TikTok um, mm. I don't really create standalone content for TikTok in short form which I know you do your um, your wallet <laughs> on TikTok was great. I think you got thousands and thousands of views for that. It was fantastic. <laughs> I haven't um, looked at that in a long time. I'm, oh, I'm yeah, to, yeah. Can, can it, it. Can, I'll, I'll, see. I'll, I'll try and see if I can find TikTok on uh, on a desktop. Oh, hang on. I just I just turned it on and someone was dancing and yelling at me, which you couldn't oh. hear because it was only in my <laughs> headphones here. So I'm not going to try and do that. But yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, yeah, no, 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 you're right. Um, it, it, and it is. Uh, it's it's weird that um, that I don't know. It's it's a stubbornness, I guess, that I haven't dived into it. And I know that many folks who are creating, and again, because this is a creator town hall, and you know, many of our creators that, that watch this show are like us. They're creating YouTube content mm. and they're creating yeah. video content. Some are musicians, and I think there's potentially even more of an opportunity there because that's where things go viral now. I, yeah, I haven't absolutely. seen a lot of things go viral on YouTube anymore and certainly none of my <laughs> videos have gone viral on YouTube <laughs> lately. But it seems to be that that's the place it goes and maybe then that's more, more... Is it more like a... Would you see it more as a way to advertise or I guess to leverage and bring people into the, your music or your content creation in other I places? Think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's... it's certainly with shorts more than tiktok because shorts is the same platform as yeah um youtube um that yeah it's a great way to advertise either entertaining segments or that you know what you're talking about if people are looking for more information they can subscribe to your channel but then you get yeah. into different issues like you'll get people if you've got a fragmented audience of people who are only liking your shorts and then people who are liking your long form content and it's all just mm -hmm. a bit up in there at the minute. I know Google made some changes to YouTube Shorts recently because again, there's a Shorts Creator Fund where people can get paid for creating this content, but again, yeah. not everybody gets any chance to earn any of that. And your earning potential is obviously a lot lower. You need to rely more on like brand deals and things. Um, so on Instagram, that's very much how creators will make most of their money if they're just doing mm. short form or reels is by getting kind of sponsored. Bye. Yes, hashtag sponsored, yeah. hashtag ad. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing we, we, wrong with that, but it's. A different I, I was going to say we. I would be an absolute hyper hypocrite if I said there was anything wrong with that because uh, <laughs> that's 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 how You're sponsoring the show this week, Pete. Is, uh, uh, that would be me, mate. Uh, this is brought to you by <laughs> Studio Live today. Go to studiolivetoday.com uh, and find out all of the things. So, uh, you're sponsoring me, mate. Did I not tell you? Did you not get the oh, invoice? Oh gosh. shoot. Okay, sorry. I'll get the invoice to you, mate. How much? <laughs> <laughs> That's an Australian dollar, so you're fine. It's only about twenty. <laughs> it's only about twenty quid. It's not good. Uh, dollar box. That's fine. 
Dollar bucks, exactly, in dollar bucks. Uh, all right, a couple more questions here because we are coming up. We've got about uh, 10 minutes left on the show here. You know what? Because we haven't had a live audience, I haven't uh, I haven't done the interaction stuff. I haven't done the YouTuber stuff where you have to say, oh, by the way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit oh, the yeah. notification bell on YouTube. Send it to 12 of your friends. Otherwise, your auntie will be executed in a horrible fire. I don't know. What wow. do you have to say these days? <laughs> <laughs> We've both gone really dark today. It's like, uh, the editing job on this one's going to be hard. It's not. I'm not going to edit any of it. So we'll say it in. Let's, uh, let, oh, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that's why I love this show. I do virtually no prep. I'm glad you said you spent 10 minutes preparing because I spent 10 minutes last night putting the topics together. I'm like, here, Patrick, talk about these. It'll be fun. Uh, let's talk about this topic because someone who has sponsored this channel, who have sponsored this very show in the past, and we do thank them for that, I love BandLab, and you've done a couple of BandLab videos mm -hmm. in recent times, yeah. and they are a, a garage band alternative. So uh, what, what's been your experience so far? And folks can go and check out the videos. I'll link them down in the description, your, your BandLab videos. But um, mm -hmm. is this in response to the fact that the number one question you get is, I don't have a Mac, I don't have an <laughs> iPad, what can I use? Yeah. How do I install GarageBand onto my Mac, onto my PC? <laughs> you don't, but try using this instead. Do not click those links. Yeah, oh, honestly. Oh. The amount of views, it's almost tempting the views these videos get. How to install GarageBand on Android, and it's a guy who's holding like a screenshot, pretending yeah. to like, you look, I've got it installed. What are you doing with your life? Uh, see that, that's 700,000 views. I'm going to make that short. I'm going to make a short video, and it's going to be how to install a garage. I'm going to be a total clickbait. I'm going to break all my own rules, and it's going to be <laughs> how to install GarageBand on a Windows PC. And I'm just going to be there. It'll be like me looking at a Windows PC and going, nope. <laughs> It'll be a two second video. It'll just be like that way. Nope. And then Excellent. that will be it. Do it. <laughs> Amazing. I'm, I'm onto I love it. it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go to bed and I'll wake up and Patrick will be like, yeah. nope. Like, oh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> So, uh, so tell us about Bad Lab. I mean, people that watch this show know about Bad Lab because I've been mm. talking about it for weeks. It's a it's yeah. a very cool platform. But um, yeah, what, what's what's been your experience playing around with Bad Lab? And is it is it tempting? Is it gonna is it gonna lure you over away from GarageBand? Um, I it's better than I thought it was going to be. So <laughs> it yeah. used to be quite limited and not mm. and quite poorly optimized and didn't run on a lot of things very well. Obviously, in more recent years, they've put a lot of time and effort into making it a lot better, and it is yeah. genuinely really good. And you can see that by the community that's sprung up around it. So mm. BandLab kind of have a really fantastic integrated social element, um, which, like, I don't know why Apple doesn't do it with GarageBand, even mm. just on iOS, because it's amazing. The whole way that you can kind of message people, you can follow people, you can easily collaborate with people, because it's all cloud-based, you can shoot projects back and forth and things and work on it and it's all kind of done kind of fairly instantaneously essentially so mm. that element of it is great and it kind of gives you a, a little glimpse of what you know if apple put a bit because band lab's free so again mm. it's not as if yeah. you're paying for it and then your money is going towards extra development time and, and things mm. like that if apple put a bit more kind of time and effort into seeing what else they could do to cultivate um, an audience or a community, I think, around GarageBand. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does that very well. The only thing that kind of the big drawback with BandLab for me is third party plugin support, which, yeah, um, yeah I mean, none. the built in stuff's pretty good, but it is mm. uh, pretty good. I'm not sure that I would want to use just those You'd... stock plugins to create a full track and then release it, if you know what I mean. You'd miss your bleach too much, Patrick. I know you. I would, yeah, know. absolutely. Mixbox, yeah, I'd be lost yeah. without it, definitely. So, um, <laughs> how would I make my vocals sound good without all of this? <laughs> Just um, a giant channel strip to put all over this. <laughs> exactly. <Done. laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it does a lot of things really well. It's accessible. It's easy, it is really easy to use. Um, some of this gimmicky stuff, like song starter and stuff, is a bit like. Uh, it's mm. not really for me. I'm sure others would find it useful, mm. but I didn't really. It's quite a cool feature, but I don't think it's particularly useful um, yeah yeah but yeah no it's it's good i mean i i've watched a couple of your band lab videos but i haven't watched all of them like what kind of stands out to you as the defining features that make it worth spending time with 
Yeah, so for for me uh, again, I get uh, it doesn't auto normalize and it has a master track, so <laughs> it gets two giant ticks yeah. out of the gate. Yeah. It, it does make me think again because it's a mobile app, and I guess the the, the cross platform is what's really cool. So you can say GarageBand is cross platform, and it is because if you use it on your iPhone and your iPad, you can then transfer it to your Mac, but then you can't transfer it back easily anyway. You can well, kind of do it, but it doesn't you know, work. Are you sure? Someone you sure? might have a video out today showing you how to do that. <gasps> yes. Which well, doesn't help because you're recording this and it's not. Uh, it'll released. already be out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, well, so, well, all you need will have already released the video. Check check the description below. Uh, and if Pete's got off his ass and actually added it, it'll be down there. <laughs> Otherwise, go over to thegaragevanguide.com because I'm sure it's over there. There you go. So, yes, I, I was being a little bit, you know, a little bit harsh, but yes, you can use the export to GarageBand iOS. I'm assuming that's what you're doing. You don't have to reveal it because we want people to go over and do that. But there well, is everybody a... Everybody knows you can do that. There's, you, you get one waveform mixed yeah. in version of your track, but you can get all of your individual tracks across the GarageBand for iOS. See, see, now I'm intrigued. See, oh man, I was, I was. One of my next questions was, what's next to the Garage Band Guide? Apparently, it is blowing my ever-loving mind <laughs> with uh, something that I didn't think you could do. It's see, not as what? elegant as how Band Lab works, to be fair, but yeah, well, you can, you yeah. can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. I'm, I'm I'm down with that because again, that's one of the questions that we that I get an awful lot. So, uh, I guess go and check out that. Uh, the, the other thing that I wanted to mention is the Sorry, the sound pack. Shameless so, plug. <laughs> shameless plug. The, the the sound packs though in BandLab are actually amazing. There is yeah. a plethora of them, and unlike GarageBand, it's not a collection of 808s and various key sounds. There's yeah. metal in there. There's rock. There's country. There's folk. There's jazz. There's Everything that you can possibly think of is all in there. Vocal yeah. samples, a bunch of cool stuff. By and they're they're obviously reaching out and getting creators to create these sample packs and putting them in there. So yeah. I know and look, a lot of people sell. Like our friend Jamie Malander creates great sample packs, mm -hmm. and Vortex has a great uh, a collection of creators yeah. that create sample packs for him. So you can of course buy sample packs, and I'd recommend you do that if you find a creator you like their style. But man, if you're starting out, if I was starting right now and all I had was an Android tablet or phone. Uh, or even like an older, this is the thing, I think some of those older iPads and iPhones that really maybe don't have yeah. the specs to run um, GarageBand, I'd be grabbing BandLab and and, create, and people are. Like, again, you yeah. watch the TikToks and you watch the short form because they're creating on their phone and it's yeah. in portrait mode, they're sharing exactly what they're doing. It's almost designed. It's almost for people 10 and 20 years younger than us. Not to you know, label us or tell us that we can't do what we want to do, but definitely <laughs> if I was, saw people starting out, I think BandLab would be pretty darn cool. That's a very good point. I uh, the whole portrait mode you can create in portrait mode with BandLab yeah. iPhone. Initially, it was like, why would you want to do that? And then, yeah, exactly, you get it. Um, yeah, short form content is back for a lot yeah. of people. Yeah, so. exactly makes it make it certainly made it, uh, the, the the last two shorts I did were BandLab shorts because it was just simple. I did a BandLab auto tune short because yeah. I could just show it there, and I did a BandLab how to share your presets short because I could show it all. I could just screen record in portrait yeah. mode record it and then there it was it was done so yeah it's it's definitely worth checking out and there yeah. you go two two garage band folks uh telling you to go try band lab is pretty weird but uh there you go and uh hashtag sponsored hashtag ad just before we <laughs> <laughs> not that we're not that either of us are sponsored and saying this because this show is not currently sponsored by band lab but it has been in the past and we have both done sponsored videos for band lab so i uh, did yeah. want to make sure that's a hundred percent clear before people are like yeah corporate shit <laughs> <laughs> Patrick and Peter try to shill for the people. Well, uh, not today. Uh, Previously, not, but today. not today. That's right. Yeah, on, on, on a future episode. Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to throw this in here because um, we both get lots of questions from from viewers, yeah. and with varying levels of detail and varying levels of information. And I just thought, as a public service, Patrick, when someone's asking you a question, be it about GarageBand or about hardware or about gear or about anything else. How should they go about asking you that? What, I guess, are your are your tips for asking questions? And what are maybe some of the things that don't help so much when people are asking you questions? Context, please. <laughs> what are you creating on? Is it Mac or iOS? I spend my life. I have a shortcut on my iPad and iPhone. Uh, I Mac or iOS? O-M. <laughs> that just populates as iOS or Mac or Mac or iOS. Because, um, yeah, we get asked these questions all the time. And it does yeah. work differently on different platforms. Oh, and yeah. It's easier to help you if you just give as much context as you possibly can, um, mm. as much description as you possibly can. Um, you Relevant do, you, you context. Do often, 
<laughs> a lot of the time, especially on Facebook and things, because we're obviously part of varying different groups and, and garage yeah. band on Facebook. Um, and sometimes people will kind of type in kind of shorthand and you're half your time spent trying to understand what they're <laughs> asking as opposed to actually helping them with their problem. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, context and just be as as clear as you possibly can with what exactly the problem is, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And when we say context and, and lots of information, we don't mean what you had for breakfast and <laughs> what what DAW you first used in 1984. These things are probably not uh, that relevant, but <laughs> definitely relevant. Uh, iOS or Mac, what you're trying yeah. to do and then what the problem is you're having. It's almost like uh, when you go for an interviews and you, you used to have to do that thing. It's like, here's the situation, here's the action, and here's the result. So the situation is, I'm trying to do this on a Mac. The action is, when I press this button, nothing happens. And the result is, I'm a frustrated mess like in the corner in the fetal position so <laughs> then we'll actually know oh okay you're trying to do the merge function on GarageBand Mac that's only available on iOS for reasons that yeah. no one knows yeah. so what you have to do is export that <laughs> solo that track export it and then re-bring it back in and then add a new track and then bring it back into the WAV file and then you'll be uh, yeah so uh, that, <laughs> that's what we need so uh, yeah, I just want to throw that out there because I know yeah. uh, are there any that you'd like to reveal what, what's the question uh, apart from the can I install GarageBand on a uh, <laughs> Windows PC is there any other question that really like um, grinds your gears that you get regularly that you uh, wish you would never get again I don't know. I'm quite. I'm not really that cynical about questions. Really, everything else about what I do, yes. <laughs> um, but in terms of questions and stuff, no, because we've all been there. We've all. I mean, it's only a stupid it's question true. if you don't know the answer, really, isn't it? So yeah. Well, and I remember I was an idiot for many years, and in many ways still am. <laughs> so um, I don't really begrudge spending time helping people kind of troubleshoot and stuff. Um, that is a perfect answer and uh, proof that you are a gentleman and uh, and want to help <laughs> folks out. Uh, again, if you if you are nice to us, we'll be nice to you. And yeah, if you if you do have questions, uh, but again, I've I've got a um I've got a, a, a shortcut link which is uh, maybe you should ask this question over at the GarageBand Users Facebook group. And here's the link <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, GarageBand. Yeah. Because again, uh, we we are two people, and I try to answer as many questions as I can. But once you get into like multi part questions back and forth, like it yeah. gets challenging when it's like uh, I got into this when I first started my channel someone would say oh how do I do this this and this and I'm just like oh, what interface do you have what platform are you using how are you doing yeah. this and then they come back with paragraphs and I'm like "Ooh, okay yeah, yeah I probably don't have time <laughs> to be your personal troubleshooter here but I will try to help but yeah there's so many places now on Reddit on Discord on uh, Facebook uh, on Twitter like there's ways that you can interact and I think uh, for, for everything I'll say about social media and it's downfalls one of the positives is you get access to a large chunk of people and instead of relying on one person and i say you know don't rely on the single human brain of pete go with the hive mind <laughs> go over to garage band users facebook group because you're going to get like 20 people like you've seen it when people yeah, ask questions yeah. you get all the all the people coming out saying i would try this i would try this and you're going to get the answer you might get too many answers you might <laughs> you might get your question <laughs> answered in many different ways especially you say what headphones should i use and it's oh, like yeah. you must use sony audio technica or nothing Set up for the win it's like yeah it's doesn't matter somebody asks oh what what audio interface should i get oh yeah 70 comments yep no if you if you use anything but uh focus right you're a scoundrel it's like <laughs> no, you're probably fine with anything <laughs> spending a hundred dollars or more you'll be fine just don't yeah. go don't start with the All b word the same nowadays, yeah. <laughs> berger um2 no everything else <laughs> Berenger. We've both done videos on Berenger UM2s and it's like, <laughs> don't do it. I know it's tempting. It's 40 bucks, but uh, don't buy it. Please, don't buy it. Uh, we are over time here and uh, we do need to uh, to finish things up here. And the, the final question I have for you, Patrick, and we've already revealed this because it's your video. Ableton, about... Ableton guys, yeah. Oh, Ableton. Okay. <laughs> I, I was going to say, oh, we, we're going to find out about uh, Mac to, to iOS. But no, your, your Ableton live series starts when? Uh, today, right now. <laughs> <laughs> the the re rebrand will have happened by the time you see this. Yeah, you've got to get Absolutely. one ear off, and you've got to like get one of those um, <laughs> grids, and then just be pr lots of flashing lights and buttons. That's that's yeah, all I know about it. Which life? <laughs> More than uh, me. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what I see. That's what I see online. Uh, so uh, obviously, folks can jump on over to the Garage Band. Oh, I've got um, I've got some good news, by the way, for you. Um, <clears throat> in, in trying to find your website, I did, I did wonder because I've asked you this before. I'm like, you're the Garage Band guy, which is obviously the best Garage Band guide. Uh, I just wanted to inform you that for only two thousand and ninety five dollars, <laughs> you can actually buy GarageBandGuide.com if you want wow. to, mate. So uh, should we start a GoFundMe campaign for for Patrick to own? GarageBandGuide.com. Hurry, Look at that. one person has it in their cart. Is that Don't you love that? I wanted to you? show you this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the most hilarious thing. But if I win the lottery, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is buy this domain name and give it straight to you. <laughs> or making videos with a crap Scottish accent. <laughs> welcome to GarageBandGuide. The only garage, no, no, the we are just oh. garage band guide. I'm your band guide, and we're gonna get into some garage band. No, I, uh, I, I would, I would, I'll guide to you, but I love that. That you, I, I just thought it was so oh. funny. It's like, hurry, one person has it in their cart. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, that's that false scarcity that we all love so much, where it's like, oh, you better get in quick, oh, FOMO, get out of there, <laughs> and you'll go there, and it'll be like, oh, would you like to add on? Guide.com for only seven thousand dollars. Like what? No, no, no. I'm trying to think because I've got the garage band guides. I've got like dot co dot uk and dot net because oh, yeah. it's the done thing. I never even thought to do that. What an idiot! Mm. Well, pff, apparently someone else did. So someone else has squatted on it and is waiting for the time that you've got a spare two thousand and ninety five dollars and want to go get garage. Quite sad that guide. that's all that's worth, really. If we're going to hold well, me for ransom, I would want it to be a bit more than two thousand dollars. You'd you know, think so, um, wouldn't you? I'm yeah. Insulted. <laughs> <laughs> you're just lucky that someone hasn't put a website on there i think that would be the the, yeah. the bigger problem if someone put if it was like a a, a prod bot style site uh then uh, you'd probably be True, a little bit yeah. worse off that yeah. people would be landing there i know our friend uh jade star has that problem she's got jadestar.com.au if you go to jadestar.com whole different experience oh really just saying yeah, don't go there. I'll wait till later. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's the middle of the day for you. I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't think 11 a.m. You're just like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Yikes. Uh, thank you, Patrick. It's been a pleasure. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't think for a second that even without a live audience asking questions that we wouldn't be able to fill an hour with, uh, with our amazing repartee and, uh, and uh, opinions on things and uh, going <laughs> off into weird, dark places. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you'll get it all. Don't worry. There will be no editing because I'm a lazy, lazy man. But uh, any, any <laughs> final parting thoughts or anything that you'd like to finish off with apart from telling folks they should go check out all your videos? Uh, yeah, come watch all my videos. Watch Pete's as well. Obviously, you do that already, of course. Why should I even say that? But yeah, just thank, it's been a blast. Thank you for having me on, Pete. It's, uh, it's great. It's different to be speaking to you in the morning as opposed to... I there you go. Man. Different time of day, not a garage band show, and no live audience. This is all very different here, but all it's been a lot of fun. Talk about garage band, though. That's hilarious. Uh, that that is true. <laughs> I, I try, every time. Do you notice that that every time I tried to go off on different tangents, I'm like, ah, oh, let's just talk about your video about uh, creating music. <laughs> but now let's talk about garage band. And what about iPads? And what about Macs? And what about uh, what about alternatives to garage band? Uh, yeah. What about short form video content about garage band? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we know our we know our place and we, we do stick to Absolutely. that. But uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you to everyone. If you had some fun here today, don't forget to do all the YouTube things. You know how to use the thumb button and you know how to share things and go over and check out all the links that I'm going to put down below as well. And until next time, we will see you. Don't forget to be kind to yourself this week, to be kind to others, keep creating, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Creator Town Hall. Bye for now. <laughs>